CataractCoach.com. A pediatric cataract in a seven-year-old patient. This is performed by an anonymous resident surgeon with attending assistance here. So here's the case. And you can see this is a very posterior-looking cataract in this young patient, seven-year-old patient. And this is certainly very visually significant. So making an incision here temporally. Interesting technique using a crescent blade there to create a tunnel here in the cornea instead of going right to a keratome. I like that. It's interesting. Ah, now here we go with the keratome. And there's the incision. Now, my suggestion in a case like this is I like the incisions to really nick the limbal vessels because it's really going to be a much better long-term healing for the patient. A totally avascular incision is going to be a little bit slower to heal and maybe not as strong. So here, using the forceps to create the rexus. Now, the rexus in a seven-year-old is going to be more challenging. This capsule is going to be very elastic. A trick you can do also is you can stain the capsule with tripan blue dye. And if you stain it with tripan blue dye, this capsule becomes a little less elastic. So even though you have a good red reflex, the, dye, the blue dye is not so much for your view, but rather to make the rexus a little easier to perform by making the capsule a little less elastic. So here, getting that rexus back on track. I like the attending, good teaching uh, here. And notice how the resident has to keep pulling this rexus inward. It wants to run out because it's so elastic. And so in a case like this, you definitely want to make the rexus continual. You don't want it to run out anywhere. And taking your time here. So again, so my suggestion so far would be make the incision, hit the limbo vessels. And the next thing is using tripan blue dye in order to stain that lens capsule because that staining will make the capsule less elastic. Now, single-handed, I like this technique. I would do some hydro dissection here. The lens is going to be soft. It's butter soft. You don't need any ultrasonic power. This is all vacuum only. And so what I do here is I just use the BSS on a cannula to hydro dissect and get that whole nucleus up out of the bag. And then you can actually remove the entire thing with just the IA probe. So faker probe certainly does work here. You can see how quickly it's aspirated out of the bag. But if it gets stuck, okay to use uh, just bimanual irrigation aspiration. That'll be good enough. You don't really have to do um, the faker probe. So here it is now going just to the IA probe. Yeah, the whole nucleus can be removed just the IA probe. There's no need to do the faker probe. Now time to clean up the posterior capsule there. Vacuum it as much as you can. And the question is here, do you do a primary posterior capsule rexus? seven-year-old child? Well, I think it depends. I think most seven-year-old kids will be able to cooperate for a YAG laser capsulotomy. So you can just put the lens in the bag and do a YAG laser capsulotomy in the future, or you could do a primary posterior capsulorexis. And so cleaning up here all that lens material, getting the capsule bag nice and clean, and you can see there in that posterior capsule, there's still some kind of staining and some opacities, and you may not get all that out. This is a case where it may be advisable to do that primary posterior capsule rexus. For a seven-year-old, likely you're going to have this patient under full general anesthesia. And there we go. And now putting in the viscoelastic, it looks like the lens is going to go right in the capsule bag. You can also, if you want to, put the eye on the bag and do the posterior capsule rexus under the optic while the optic's already in the eye. Here comes the lens, looks like a three-piece acrylic lens. Let's see how that's delivered. And I see the incision was slightly enlarged. Um, you want to just really make the incision of an appropriate size here. Yeah, there you go, enlarge that a little bit. And again, see there's no vascular, no bleeding from the incision. I'd rather have a little bit of bleeding next time. Certainly this incision is going to be getting a suture. So there comes the lens. That looks great. Now lens cuts, what do you do? Let's assume the patient's other eye is essentially plano. Then what do you do in this eye? You got a couple options, but I think probably your best bet here is to also aim for plano. This is a patient who's seven years old, so the eye size axial length is pretty much where you need it to be as an adult size. But I do like the suture, good idea. And you can see that erectus that was done at the beginning looks pretty good. It's overlapping the optic for 360. That lens is nicely centered. And um, again, that posterior capsule does have some haze on it. That's going to need to be yagged at some point later. Oh, smart technique. Pre-placing the suture, I like that idea. Then removing the viscoelastic. And then that way you can place the suture when the eye's at a normal 
uh, tension with viscoelastic, which won't leak out of the incision so easily. And this patient certainly can get a YAG laser. I'd probably wait at least a couple of months. I'd wait a couple of months until the capsule has fully shrunk, and then you can go ahead and do the YAG capsulotomy. So at the end here, the suture looks great. Get that tied up and get it tied and cut and get it rotated, and this patient will do great. Thanks for watching and thanks for submitting this very interesting case.